News for Jaxis and Chief Meteorologist David Eckerd. Of course, the devastating images we are seeing from Hurricane Ian continue to pour in, and it's becoming more and more certain that the system created a lot of its damage not by wind, but actually by storm surge. So what is storm surge and what makes it so deadly? Well, storm surge is the abnormal rise of water over and above predicted tide levels. And normally it's nothing big during windy conditions or even a nor'easter here in northeast Florida and southeast Georgia. Oftentimes that's just the water that kind of covers the beach on very, very active days. But as we head into a hurricane or tropical storm, that's when that surge begins to impact areas like piers, areas right up against the coast, including some of those beach uh, restaurants that reside right along the coast itself. Unfortunately, we had a landfalling hurricane in southwest Florida, and that produced devastating damage. You can see the wave and surge activity pushing all the way well inland, resulting in devastating structural impacts, including the loss of entire homes and buildings. Unfortunately, Southwest Florida, this was a basically worst case scenario for storm surge. Ian was approaching from the southwest and this corner of Florida is very susceptible to surge. The Gulf of Mexico is very shallow in this area, so the water has nowhere to go but actually in inland areas. And if you've been to Southwest Florida, you know the land is very flat with numerous bays and rivers. All that allowed the surge to just pour its way inland. In fact, downtown Fort Myers saw a surge, which is 15 miles away from the Gulf of Mexico. Now here in Northeast Florida, Southeast Georgia, we are susceptible to surge, but not as intense as sections of Southwest Florida. In fact, you can see here, this is a map from the National Hurricane Center. This shows potential surge from a possible category one storm. You can see a lot of the surge is confined towards the beaches. That's mainly due to the fact that the waters off the Atlantic are significantly deeper, so it can absorb some of that surge as it approaches the coastline. But I also want you to notice the threat for some surge along the St. John's Rivers and some of its creeks and tributaries. So we do have the threat for storm surge in inland areas if a hurricane were to impact. And of course, for some of us who've lived here a while, we know that that surge is very possible in the St. John's during bigger hurricane events. We're going to have more on Hurricane Ian, its impacts, and why the storm was so strong throughout the days and weeks here on News for Jackson, News for Jacks Plus. For now, I'm David Heckard, Channel 4, the local station.